Isang mapagpalang linggo po sa inyong lahat. This is our second Sunday for our Mission Continues Preaching Series because we believe that even in this pandemic, the mission of preaching the gospel and advancing His kingdom to every nation and or in every nation continues. Welcome po sa ating afternoon service. It's another exciting Sunday to worship the Lord. Again, we are victory. We are here to honor God and to make disciples. If you are here for the first time with us, tuning in, 
Pwede niyo po ba kami i-message o bigyan niyo po kami ng emoji wave sa comment section. We would really love to get to know you more and pray for you. Bago po tayo magpuri sa Panginoon, let me read to you from 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 ang salita ng Diyos. Ngunit kayo'y mga taong pinili, mga maharlikang pari at mga mamamayan ng Diyos. Pinili kayo ng Diyos na maging Kanya upang ipahayag ninyo ang kahanga-hanga niyang mga gawa. Siya ang tumawag sa inyo mula sa kadiliman tungo sa kahanga-hanga niyang kaliwanagan. Bago po tayo magpuri at umawit sa Panginoon, maaari po bang ito ang ating pagtuunan ng isipan at ng ating damdamin at ng ating puso? Isang tabi po muna natin yung mga iba nating ginagawa upang tayo po ay makapag-focus sa pag-awit sa Panginoon. At pwede pong huwag muna po tayong mag-chat. Okay, tayo po ay magpuri lamang sa ating Diyos sa mga oras na ito.
Panginoon, maraming maraming salamat po na Ikaw ang Diyos na pumili at tumawag sa amin at, kayo, at kami ay iyong iniligtas. Maraming maraming salamat po sa iyong kabutian sa aming buhay. Sa pangalan ni Jesus, Amen. Sa mga oras mong ito, we will be partaking of our communion. Again, kung first time ka dito, maaari po lamang na maganda ka ng maliit na bread at a little juice. And let me read to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 hanggang 26 as we prepare our hearts in partaking of the communion. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Ating pong kunin yung ating bread at yung ating juice at tayo po ay manalangin. Lord, maraming maraming salamat po sa iyong katawan at sa iyong dugo na siyang naglinis at siyang nagbigay ng aming kapatawaran sa aming mga kasalanan. Lord, today we remember that it is all because of what you did on the cross. Lord, that is why we have the boldness to come before you. That is why we can live victoriously. That is why we can preach the gospel to all the nations. And Lord, today, panalangin po namin na Ikaw ang aming maluwalhati even as we partake of our communion. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's partake 
of the bread. Thousand years ago, ibinigay po ng Panginoon ang ating katagumpayan sa buhay. At maaring narito ka ngayon, and you're, you're going through a very difficult time. Nagsistruggle ka sa kasalanan o may mga bagay-bagay na hindi mo mapaglabanan. Let me pray for you right now. Let me ask the Lord to give you the grace and the boldness to come before Him. You know, again, no, kung ikaw po yun, Maari po bang manalangin tayong palandalian at maaring ikaw hindi yung pa isinusuko yung buhay mo sa Panginoon. Maaring ito rin yung panahon na isuko mo yung, yung buhay sa Kanya at hayaan mo ang Panginoon na maghari sa iyong buhay. Maari po ba tayong manalangin palandalian? Tayo po lahat ay pumigit. At kung ikaw narito ko ngayon, nakikinig ka at nanonood ka at alam mo na hindi yung pa naisuko yung buhay mo sa Panginoon. Ang Panginoon sa so Kristo ay namatay para sa iyo upang mapagtagumpayan mo ang buhay nito. At maaari mo siyang tanggapin ngayon bilang iyong Panginoon na nagpaglintas. Maaari ba tayong manalangin niya? Lord, today I open my heart and receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for the forgiveness of my sin. And Lord, maraming maraming salamat din po na sa mga panahong ito ay matatagumpayan ko ang paglaban ko sa mga kasalanan dahil ito ay manggagaling sa iyo. Ang kalakasan upang pandabanan ang mga ito ay hindi manggagaling sa aking sarili kundi manggagaling sa iyong banal na spirito na siyang tutulong at mag, ay, paglalaban ako. Lord, maraming maraming salamat po sa oras na ito. Sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen at Amen. Kung pinanalangin mo po yung prayer na yun sincerely in your heart or from your heart, Maaari niyo po ba kaming i-message okay, upang matulungan ka namin sa bago mong relasyon sa Panginoon sa iyong bagong journey of faith in knowing the Lord even more. Right now, uh, tayo po ay mananalangin pa rin. No? Mananalangin po tayo para sa mga nangyayari sa ating bayan at sa mga bayan sa mundo. Uh, we'll be giving you two minutes. Uh, would you please pray for these prayer points on your screen? Thank you so much for praying. Right now, let us all watch 
what God is doing, okay, napakaganda po ng ginagawa ng Panginoon sa, sa, sa church po natin sa Pakistan na despite the pandemic, the Lord has brought so much growth even even though yung kanila mga services at mga ginagawa na still online. Makita po natin yung fruitfulness na binibigay ng Panginoon. Let's watch this video. One of the problems here is actually there's a law which is you're not allowed to convert people. But because of God's faithfulness and God's protection, God is moving here in this nation. Last March 2020, the government decided to have full lockdown of the entire nation. Since then, we adjusted to online services. We had only one service gathering post-lockdown and yet, During this pandemic, we birthed an online Urdu service to cater the needs of the non-English speakers and continue the English service. One of the major activities we had as a church when pandemic started was the community giving. Our church and some church members contributed as well, and we blessed the less fortunate neighbors of our members. And the members participated had a chance to pray and minister to them and we inserted a bible verse inside the groceries for each family because we believe through this verse we were able to plant the seed upon their hearts next year we are excited to announce that we will have the church planting in one of the major cities here in this nation Through online services, even small group meeting, we were able to disciple contacts we had on that city. And four of them are now going to be part of the Victory Weekend this coming November. Small group has been birthed through online as well. Church planting did not stop despite challenges in the air and land transportation. Indeed, the Kingdom of God is forcefully advancing by reaching out to the students of that major city. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 8, it says, I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door which no one is able to shut. I know that you have but little power, and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. We are so excited that one day that this nation will just kneel down before God and worship Jesus Christ. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10, it says there, For God is not unjust so as to overlook your word and the love that you have shown for His name in serving the saints, as you still do. On behalf of every nation Pakistan, we know that you are sacrificing to give so generously to our work. And we sincerely appreciate your prayers and your support. Bohot bohot. Shukriya. God's grace and protection are indeed evident in Pakistan. We are amazed at how God is causing the church to grow in spite of the pandemic and lockdowns. God is shaking nations and opening doors at this time that will impact the generations to come. We thank you for your generosity and your prayers. Let's continue to take part as God advances His kingdom in every nation. God's unmistakable hand is moving in each and every nation of the world in this season of crisis and lockdown. Thank you so much for supporting and praying our mission work. Together, let's continue to see every nation reached for God. And for our giving today, as we worship Him in our, with our finances, let me read to you from Philippians chapter 4, verses 15 through 17. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. Not that I desire your gifts, what I desire is that more be credited to your account. Here's the Apostle Paul speaking to the believers in Philippians. And, 
and, and just encouraging them that they're giving to the mission is actually, you know, ang, ang pinagbibray ni Apostle Paul is makredit sa kanila yung kanilang generosity na kanilang ginagawa in partnering with them. And itong ginagawa nila is an investment for the kingdom and it will return to them. And, and, and again, you know, I want us to pray as we give our tithes and offering today. Lord Jesus, thank you for that word from the Apostle Paul in Philippians. Lord, and how he encouraged the church and the believers Lord, to, to really uh, be mindful of the gift that they have given you. And Lord, that he is praying that it will be credited to their account. Lord, I pray that you would do that for all of us as we give to you, as we give to the missions, as we give our tithes and our offering today. Lord, may we honor you and may you credit it to our account. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's watch this video. Para po malaman natin kung paano mag-give online. For your online giving, please visit uh, victory.org.ph slash give. You may give through your credit card, debit card, or GCash. And if you are giving to our missions, you may give to everynation.org.ph slash give. And there's a link also at the comment section. Right now, you can see it at the comment section. Pwede din po yung follow so that you can give for missions. At kung kailangan nyo pa rin po ng assistance in giving online, pwede nyo pong tawagan o i-text yung mga numero na nasa screen nyo ngayon at i-message nyo po kami sa Facebook. We would gladly help you. Pero kung gusto nyo pa rin po yung personal nyo, gamitin yung envelope natin at ihulog yung inyong tithes and offerings sa box, uh, maaari po kayong magtungo every Saturday and Sunday sa Victory Metrics dun po sa area ng ating Kids Church. Ito po ay bukas ng alas 11 ng umaga hanggang alas 5 ng hapon. Uh, yung pong ating mga team members will be there uh, to assist you. Pero ang um, again, no, pagka pumunta po kala pala kayo sa ating center, please make sure you wear your face mask and your face shield. Pero ang pinakagusto po talaga naming gawin natin lahat ay, ma- ay patuloy tayong mag-give online para po maiwasan na rin yung ating paglabas ng ating tahanan. Again, thank you so much for generously giving and even sacrificially giving. And I believe, like what Apostle Paul said, I am praying that it will be credited to your account. We are very excited to hear the word of God today as we worship Him in our, you know, in, in the preaching of the word. We have a guest speaker today and uh, our, our speaker for today, I, I really admire this man, uh, he is a senior pastor. He's our senior pastor in, our, in Victory Ortigas, serving in full-time ministry for more than 20 years now. Uh, his heart is so big when it comes to the next generation. He actually served in the campus ministry as the director for many years before he became one of the pastors in Victory Ortigas. Pastor Rico Ricafort, yung pong speaker natin today, is now gearing up for a church planting Okay, mission in the nation of Panama. Ang layo po nun, no? But his heart is really on fire to preach the gospel. His faith to go and make disciples of all nations is really admirable. Pastor Rico is married to Kitty and a father of three children. To, a three, uh, to three children. Annually po ginagawa natin itong uh, global mission uh, series. And... Uh, because we believe that the nations is indeed our inheritance. Naniniwala po tayo na yung pong mga bansa, bayan ay ating inheritance at mana natin. And later on po after the preaching of the message, please don't go straight away because we want to make sure that we can all 
partner and we can know and we take part in what the Lord wants us to do in the mission that he has given all of us. Because we believe that even in this pandemic, the mission continues. Let us all be excited. Let's all be ready and prepare our hearts to receive from the Lord as we hear the preaching of God's word. Let's welcome Pastor Rico Ricofort. Hello, everyone. As you all know, we're in our second part of our mission series, The Mission Continues. And I want to read from Romans chapter 15. And we're going to begin reading in verse 18. For I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me, to bring the Gentiles to obedience by word and deed, by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem all the way around to Elicrium, I have fulfilled the ministry of the gospel of Christ. And thus I make it my ambition to preach the gospel, not where Christ has already been named, lest I build on someone else's foundation, but as it is written, those who have been told of him will see, and those who have never heard will understand. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you that your heart is for the nations. And we pray even today, Lord, just like Paul, we make it our ambition to preach the gospel all over the world, especially where Christ is not known. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you've entrusted to us the ministry of reconciliation. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us the great commission. And we pray today, Father, that we would have the heart to fulfill it. That we're not just going to watch others have the burden for the great commission, but we ourselves, Lord, Lord, our families, Lord, would have the burden, Lord. Our children would have the burden. Our church would have the burden. Our nation would have the burden to preach your word all over the world. Lord, anoint the preaching of your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. You know what? Uh, I'm just so excited because every year we talk about global missions. Every year we talk about reaching the nations. In fact, as you all know, Salabas po ng victory, salabas po ng Pilipinas. We are known as every nation. Isn't it great, you know, that our name, every nation, is very much connected to what the Lord desires, which is to have the gospel proclaimed in all nations? Just think about this for a moment. Think about the future. In heaven, every tongue, every tribe, Every nation, every language will be represented. That's what's going to happen in the future. That's what's going to happen in, in eternity. And right now, all of us, we have a chance to participate in the Great Commission. And you know, if we have the love of God in our hearts, we're going to be excited for what God is excited about. You know, I want to turn to the very verse, okay? As we talk about the mission continues, talking about world missions, I want to show you Paul's ambition. And his ambition was found here in verse 20. Okay, he said, And thus I make it my ambition to preach the gospel, not where Christ has already been named, lest I build on someone else's foundation. In other words, his ambition was to preach the gospel where Christ is not known. And where is Christ not known? During Paul's time, it's the rest of the world. So he had a global ambition. He had a global view of the gospel. And I believe, you know, as people of God, we too should have that same kind of vision. Like the Apostle Paul, he had a global vision. And I'm just so thankful that here in Victory, we make it a priority to reach every nation. And you may ask, how can we say that accomplished na yung mission natin? How can we say that the gospel has been preached to all nations? How can we measure that? How do we do that? You know, the words that we all long to hear from our Lord Jesus Christ is this, good and faithful servant, come into your master's rest. That one day when we all 
go to heaven, that we would hear good and faithful servant. And I do hope that we would be found faithful, especially when it comes to the heart of God, which is the nations. In fact, if you're going to look at the Bible, there were a few times Jesus was angry. And one of the times was when they were, the disciples were bringing the kids to him and the disciples didn't let them. That's one. And the second time is, you know that, when he went to the temple and he, he was so angry because they made the temple into a marketplace. And Jesus said, this temple should be a house of prayer for the nations. So even at that point, you can see already the heart of Jesus for the nations. And going back to Paul, his heart was always for the nations. But the question is, how will he go about it? How will he fulfill this global mission of proclaiming the gospel into all the world? Paano niya po gagawin yun? And we're going to go back a few verses. And like what I read earlier in verse 18, he said, I will not venture to speak anything except what Christ has accomplished through me. You see, from the very beginning of Paul's ministry to the very end, it wasn't about him. It was all about what Christ has done through him. And because of that, he was able to preach the gospel in places where Christ is not known. Was not known at all. In fact, tignan po natin dito. And there are three things I want to share, okay, on how to fulfill the Great Commission. How do we do it? Okay? Tignan po natin yung buhay ni Paul and we could also make it our ambition to preach the gospel into all the world. You may say, ay, baka hindi naman ako pumunta sa world missions. I've never been to world missions. Well, there are ways we can participate. We can pray for the nations. We can give. Okay? And we can go. And I just want to tell you, all of us have a part to play. Okay? Tignan mo yung katabi mo. Okay, you have a part to play in world missions. And let's make it our ambition today. So, paano po ginawa ni Paul to? Una-una, sinabi niya, you know, I'm not going to venture to say anything else except what Christ has done through me. Okay? Look at this verse. In verse 18, it says, To bring the Gentiles to obedience by word and deed. So, how did he fulfill the great commissions? Okay, how did he do that? Number one, he did it by word and by deed. Sabi po dito, by word and deed. So it wasn't just about words, about proclaiming the gospel to people, but Paul actually displayed it in his life. He lived it out. There was a transformation in his life. That's why his message was believable because they saw the change, the transformation in his life. I was just thinking from Paul being the persecutor, to being the persecuted. From Paul dragging people to be imprisoned because of their faith in Christ to now preaching about Christ. The transformation of Paul's life already speaks volumes that when they see, wow, there's really power in the gospel. Kasi kung si Paul nagbagong buhay, siguro ako rin pwede magbagong buhay. By word and by deed. You know what? It's not just our words that will bring change. It's not just about speaking or proclaiming the word, but it's also by living it out. And if we're going to look at the life of Paul, oh man, he lived it. He lived it. He went through a lot of suffering. He went through a lot of pain. I was just, you know, reading Acts a few weeks ago. And I just saw the life of Paul and how difficult it was. He went through a shipwreck on the way to Rome, okay, to plead his case, okay, because he was on death row, nagkaroon ng shipwreck, hindi po siya namatay doon. And during the shipwreck, uh, the prison guards wanted to kill all the prisoners, which included him, but God saved him, okay. So he saved him from the shipwreck, he saved him from the prison guards, and then they landed on this island, okay, and then a snake bit him while he was on the island. So time after time, so kinagat siya na snake, hindi rin siya na matay. Okay, God saved him. So we can see here now that through the life of Paul, despite all the sufferings, God was there. He was there. And you know what? During this time of suffering, during this pandemic, God's going to save us as well. 
He's going to give us the grace to overcome. No matter what the things, no matter what kind of suffering Paul went through, God saved him through it all. And I believe God's going to save us through all that's happening during this time of pandemic, through all the pain, through all the fear, through all the worry and anxiety, God will deliver us. Now, thinking about Paul, he did it by word and deed. Paano po tayo? It's going to be our lives, our example, that our preaching of the gospel would be accompanied or backed up by the life we live. Na meron pong transformation. That when we start telling our families about Christ, they would believe in Him. Why? Because they would see the change in our own lives. When we start telling our friends, our office mates about Christ, as we proclaim the gospel, they would see it's backed up by a changed and transformed life. Secondly, what did Paul say? How can we fulfill the Great Commission? How can we preach and make it our ambition to have a global vision? Okay? Sabi po niya dito, una by word and deed. In verse 19, it says, By the power of signs and wonders. By the power of signs and wonders. You know what? When he preached the word of God, it was through signs and wonders as well. And that's our prayer as we go to the nations of the earth. In fact, simulan po natin dito sa bansa natin sa Pilipinas. Let's pray for signs and wonders to accompany the preaching of the word. That when we go out there and we preach, we're going to see healing. We're going to see deliverance. Even as we prophesy, people will be encouraged. Let's believe for signs and wonders. Okay? Hindi po imposible, lalo na ngayon ang panahon ng pandemic, let's pray for healing. Let's pray for deliverance. Talking about signs and wonders. Uh, the, as maybe a lot of you know, especially in Ortigas, that our plan was to be in Panama July of this year. We were planning this since last year. Our goal was to plant a church in Panama However, because of the pandemic, hindi po natuloy yun. Uh, we were supposed to bring a team over there. And we were thinking, so paano ngayon to? Hindi po natuloy yung church plant. But thank God, natuloy pa rin. Paano? Because we have a group, uh, part of the Panama team, of students while they were at their class, at the, the World Missions class, they decided to create a survey of students in Panama and ask them, what activities would you like to do? Okay, anong classing activities in your campus would you like to do? It was just an online survey, and about 100 plus students answered. And one of the top answers, ito sa University of Panama Puto. Okay, thank God for our graduating students, you know. When they responded, they said one of the top answers was to learn English. And lo and behold, the team, you know, they thought about, why not start an English class? So we started an English class online for Panamanian students. And recently, we had close to 20 students who signed up, who are now enrolled in our English class in Panama. Praise God. You know, I'm going to show you some pictures over here. Ito po yung picture. We also had a, what do you call, a, a fiesta. Okay, so translate po natin lahat sa Spanish. We had a... Uh, a party or a fiesta online, and about 15 students came. And think about this. We're reaching the students right now. We are engaging them right now. Wala po po tayo sa Panama, but we can start the church plant today. Isn't that a miracle? That's the miracle of technology. You know that we don't need to travel over there to preach the word. It's happening while we are here in the Philippines. I believe that's part of signs and wonders. And we're believing even as we engage these students, the time will come that they will give their lives to Christ. 20 students. And you may say, ay, konti lang do, 20. Praise God. Each student represents a family. And if we reach one student for Christ, we can reach their family. And we can reach their family. We can reach their city. We can reach their city. We can reach their nation. So the good news, church, is the church plant in Panama has already begun. So please continue to pray with us. 
you know, right now we're trying to learn Spanish as much as possible. You know, the team is learning and we need God's grace to learn the language fast. But even as we pray for these students, even as we engage them online, we're asking that the power of God would flow through the internet, that would flow through the Zoom meetings, that they may understand the love of Christ. And you know what? We are all part of this. Let's pray. In fact, I have to just take this moment to pray for those students in Panama. Lord, we thank you for those students in Panama, especially those, God, who are taking this English class. We pray, God, that you would speak to them. We pray for signs and wonders as we minister to them, Lord, as they hear the word, that they would receive Christ as their Lord and Savior. Thank you, God. Nothing's impossible. Even if we are not there physically, signs and wonders can happen, that they can receive the gospel of Christ and be transformed and changed. Lord, thank you, God. We're claiming the salvation of those students, Lord, in Jesus' name. Now, ano po yung pangatlo? How did Paul preach the gospel into all the world? Okay, in his world. How did he fulfill his, his, this ambition of his? Una-una, we mentioned it through word and deed. Okay, through his life. Second, by signs and wonders, okay? And thirdly, this is so important because this applies to us all, by the power of the Spirit of God. You know what, church? The Bible says when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, we will have the power to be witnesses. That power is in you today. If the Holy Spirit is inside of you, that power is in you. That all of us can be a witness because the thing that would people ask uh, most of the time about themselves is, oh, I don't know how to preach the gospel. Oh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what to say. Well, the Holy Spirit inside of you will give you the words. And all we need to do is just to step out in faith and say, Lord, here I am. Use me. One of the most dangerous prayers of all is to say, Lord, here I am. Use me. It's not, Lord, here I am. Use somebody else. It's not, Lord, you know, here I am, send somebody else. No, God wants to use you. The Spirit of God is inside of you. And I'm just so excited that, you know, not just the church plant that's happening in Panama, we are planting churches all over the world. And we're glad. And we're going to see that even through this pandemic, the Holy Spirit is still moving. And I, I thank God for all the victory groups happening on Zoom right now. I thank God that we can still proclaim it all over, you know, our nation and all over the world. I'm just talking about one example, which is Panama. But victory groups are happening all over the nation and worldwide. And the gospel is being preached. Why? It's through the power of the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit that's inside of us gives us the power to preach. Now going back. And it says, says here, I have fulfilled the ministry of the gospel of Christ by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and all the way around to Elicrium, I fulfill the ministry of the gospel of Christ. You know, that's what we want to do. We want to fulfill the mission of proclaiming the gospel of Christ. But where do we begin? Where do we start? Let's start in our own homes. Let's start with our own families. If you're believing for the salvation of your family, claim it today. Preach to them today. You have, okay, a captured audience. Why? Because a lot of people are in quarantine now. A lot of people are at home. Your family is at home. You have a captured audience. Let's preach the gospel to our families. Paul said he started in Jerusalem all the way down to Elicrium. But still, his ambition in verse 20, was to preach the gospel not where Christ has already been named. You know what? Let's make it our ambition today that, to say that, Lord, I want to preach your word. I want to proclaim your name where your name has not been proclaimed. Lord, we're asking today that you would give each and every one of us the heart of missions. And sometimes you may say, oh, it's such a big ambition. Paano po natin gagayahin si Apostle Paul? You know what? The Apostle Paul had the same Holy Spirit that resides in you today. 
And therefore, you too can have that ambition for global missions. You too can have that ambition to preach the gospel where the gospel hasn't been preached. Even as we pray, even as we give, even as we go ourselves, we can see that this mission will continue. Not just in our lives, but in the lives of our children, even in the next generation. We're going to pray in a moment. But just a reminder, how do we fulfill this? How do we fulfill this mission that God has given us? By word and by deed, by signs and wonders, and by the Spirit of Almighty God that resides in each and every one of us. Let's just bow our heads and pray right now. Father, we thank you for this word. Lord, we are asking today that you would empower us by your Holy Spirit. Lord, just like the Apostle Paul who made it his ambition to preach the word where Christ has not been preached, where Christ is not known, we pray, Lord, that would be our ambition as well, that we would have a heart for global missions. Lord, we may not go there ourselves to the farthest parts of the earth, but Lord, thank you that we can pray. Even now, Lord, we pray, God, that you would give a nation, that you would drop a nation in our hearts that we would pray for. We also pray, God, even as we give financially, Lord God, to support our missionaries, we thank you, Lord, that it's also part of our ambition to see the gospel spread. We're asking, Lord God, for signs and wonders to begin even in our own household, even in in a place of work. Lord, we're asking, God, for signs and wonders to preach your word. And we pray, Lord God, for your Holy Spirit that's inside of us, to continue to empower us, that we can go, Lord, that we can pray, that we can give. I pray for everyone watching, Lord, that you would drop a burden in their hearts for global missions, that you would drop a nation in their heart, even right now, Father. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we're going to say, we're going to take part. That when that time comes, Lord, In heaven, there's a representation of every tongue, every tribe, every language, every nation. Lord, we're going to say thank you, God, for making us part of this great commission. Lord, why do we do this? It's because we love you. That the command you've given us is to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And even as we fulfill this great commission, Lord, we would speak what Paul has spoken, that we would venture, we would not venture to say anything else except what Christ has accomplished through us. Lord, we thank you, we honor you, and we pray that this word would be fulfilled in our lives and in our families. We thank you, we honor you, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Rico for that wonderful message, for a reminder through the life of Apostle Paul. Na yung nasa puso talaga ni Apostle Paul is, is global uh, mission. Okay? His amb- ambition is to accomplish the Great Commission. And nakakatuwa lang kasi he did not do it on his own strength, but with the power of the Holy Spirit. Ang good news po para sa ating lahat is like Paul, Okay, we have a part in accomplishing the Great Commission. We can participate in fulfilling the call to go and make disciples of all nations. Some of us are called to go. Okay, like si Pastor Rico who will be going to Panama or si Pastor Dan uh, sa Pakistan at si Pastor Dan din ng, sa Inkarnasyon sa Kyrgyzstan. Si, sila po itinawag ng Panginoon okay, to be a cross-cultural missionary and plant church or churches in the nations pero that might not be for all of us but we can all i say all pray and give many of us okay many of us this might be the part that we have to play you know to to play and that is to pray and to give we believe that praying and giving are vital to send out workers into the mission field and we would like to invite everyone who are tuning in Okay, to participate in accomplishing and continuing the mission together in spite of this pandemic. So no matter how the mission field looks like, we believe that God is sovereign 
and we believe that He has opened door for us. He has opened door, opened doors for us. Okay, in spe- this specific season, and we are excited to continue the work that God has given us and has called us to do. We believe that this is a step of faith to many of you, or to many of us here, or maybe sometimes it might even be a sacrificial uh, giving. So we would like you to partner with us or maybe continue with your partnership with us. And we made it easier for you. Right now, Bo, you can go to the uh, comment section and you can look at the link and follow that link. Or you can scan the QR code on the screen. And I'd like to give us some time right now to do this. Because I believe with all of my heart that many of you are being touched by the Lord to partake and to be a partner in the things that God has called us to do. This is not just for some of us. This is for all of us. So no matter what you, where you are right now, would you go to that link right now and take time to fill it up and ask the Lord how you can partner with us in the work that He has called us. Thank you for your unwavering partnership and prayers. We will continue to reach the nations together. So let me just pray for all the commitment that we made today. Thank you for filling up that uh, link and thank you for uh, taking the picture of that QR code. Let's just pray right now for this commitment that we made today. Lord, thank you for the word that you have given us today. Lord, thank you that the mission continues and this mission is not just for some people. This is for all of us. And Lord, I thank you for the role that you have given us that that we can play in reaching the nations of the world. And Lord, as we commit and and pray to give this amount, Lord, to the missions, Lord, I pray that you would give us the grace and the faith and, and, and the ability, Lord God, to fulfill this commitment every month. Lord, I pray that you will be with us. I pray, Lord, that you would credit this to our account, like what you said, like what the Apostle Paul said to the Philippians. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Again, thank you so much for joining us today. And I pray that the Lord will continue to speak to you. If you did not make that commitment yet today uh, to give to our missions, I pray that within the week, the Lord will touch you, and the Lord, and you will respond to the, you know, to the, uh, to the Lord, and that you will partner with us. Let me speak a, a prayer of blessing for all of us right now. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace, now and forevermore. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you. See you again next week.